All right, here we go. It's Pablo from 93X backstage with Scott Staff and Creed. Hey, dude, you and I sat down, what was it, last February, I think, when you guys were in town. We wrapped a little bit about what you guys bring to the stage, your energy and whatnot. Tonight, Minneapolis, the second time through, are you guys going to change it up a little bit? I know you like to open with bullets. I know you were slinging a guitar last time. Is Minneapolis going to see something different, or is it going to be the same vibe? Um, you know, we're, uh, God, I hope we're not playing the same set. We, we love to come out with bullets. I know it's, uh, the set's changed up somewhat over, uh, over the last year, but uh, you know the lighting's better. There's some more gags here or there, and and uh, better camera stuff. And uh, you know we're all a lot better than we were. You know there's there's some more freestyling going on, and and just it's uh it's it's somewhat the same show, but but not. Um, you know we uh, we've got a lot of tunes to pick from yep. so uh i don't know if if uh that night we picked what songs we picked off off the other records to play um but uh you know we'll be playing different songs and and uh just uh people see a difference i think in the in the performance level and how we've grown uh this year um, well, it's good to see that you guys actually try and think outside of the box, not always deliver the same show. You know, that's cool for your fans. How long have you guys been on the road? Oh, man. I think we started in mid-January, but there's been a lot of bumps along the way. Which uh, leads me perfectly into my next question. I heard you got into a car wreck, Scott. What uh, what happened with that? Uh, basically, I was in stop-and-go traffic, and I was stopped, and the lady behind me was at 60 mile an hour's go. And... Uh, you know, it kind of set us back for a while, and then, you know, it's been a rough year for everybody. Mark's mom passed away this year, and we had to take some time off and and uh, spend some time with him and his family. And and then my voice, uh, because of the car accident, I have a tendency to kind of really feel like if we have to ever move a show or, or postpone anything, that I kind of take it personal, like it's my fault, like I, I did something wrong, like if I you know, would have left five minutes earlier than, you know, I, I had that, it's just a personal problem, and so I kind of got real depressed, and so when we when we booked uh, the tour after that, um, I was like, you know, boom, I want to do five, six shows a week, I want to go everywhere, I want to do this and that, and just kind of overdid it, and just killed my voice, right. and uh, it was all out of good intentions, but, uh, you know, we we learned and we'll never make that mistake again. My managers know when I get gun ho like that, and and you know they know what we can do, and so they'll stop me next time. Right, right on. So when you do get downtime, when you get away from it all, the fans, the loud music, is that when you work on new material? Is that when you're writing new stuff for the next Creed record? I I think indirectly. Um, you know, I know Mark plays a lot during the day, uh, five or six hours. You know, I I've been my writing never stops um it's just us collaborating and coming together with what we're doing um you know we uh we kind of like to do it now uh at the end you know after we've taken some time off after promoting the album it worked for weathered and uh you know we kind of liked it and because when we got together we were so excited about everything that we had and uh, we hadn't written together and, and brought everything together for so long that we we just got together and boom, you, you know, the album came out because it was it, it felt right and and we were so excited about it. And that's what uh, you know we never want to get bored or maybe that's the wrong word or, or tired of of that experience. And we never wanted to feel like you know we have to do it because. You know, we we got to put out another record or it's a job or anything like that. We want to keep it where it's like, you know, we get to this point where we just can't handle it anymore. We got to get together and have some fun. And more we got to get together and have some fun and just me and him. And then we just go. So with 20, over 20 million in sales, um, you know, does Creed get time off? And then they like, do we reinvent ourselves? Do we come up with the same thing that is that is Creed from day one? Or do you guys actually sit down and go, God, can we give them something new? Because we got lots of fans, lots of people buying our records. Can we actually sit down and maybe reinvent ourselves a little bit and come up with some new vibes? 
we are the most non like think ahead or try to do something on purpose band I think in the world I mean we we have definitely evolved over these three records but it's all been natural and not thought about um, and so we're much about just freestyling and and whatever comes out comes out and and when we feel like we have uh, a record you know we'll go record it but um, you know I, I think the only time we ever ever thought about whether we should put a certain song on a record because of us being a, a rock band was dancing on this record. We, you know, we really thought we were like once we sat back and listened to it in the studio, um, we were like, man, we're really pushing it here. I mean, yes, it did come from us, but you know that that's about as far as we can go um, as a as a rock band. And uh, and then the whole 9/11 thing happened, and that was during the mixing process of that song, and and we shut the board off, and and probably like 99% of the U.S. and maybe the world, we sat in front of the TV for four or five days, and and then when we came back in, uh, we pulled the song up on the board and and listened to it one time through, and it was just like. Wow, it kind of all like it meant something completely different at that moment, yeah. <clears throat> and so from that day on, we were like, you know, yeah, we got to put this on the record just for sentimental reasons, and and it was part of our healing process, and and now since then, you know, we've decided to use the song as a limited edition single and and release it in that format with our DVD with it and some other things, and uh, you know, all the money will go to uh, the With Arms Wide Open Foundation and then straight to the New Yorkers for Children, which is a group that is supporting uh, some of the orphan kids from 9-11 as well as some of the single moms that were left or the single dads that were left. And so, uh, you know, that's really cool. I think it's kind of our way of healing, you know, by yeah. doing our little part. Yeah, I would imagine, Scott, you probably have an emotional attachment to every one of your songs, whether it be something that rips or something that's a little bit more mellow. Is there one that uh, you like to perform above all others, something that you're a little closer to? It, it depends on what's going on in my life at the time. Um, you know, there are some nights where every single song just happens to be exactly what I'm feeling inside. That happened in West Palm Beach uh, about uh, seven to ten days ago. Um, it happened again, uh, I think, the show before last. Um, and then most of the time it's it's just various songs. I'll really be like, man, you know, I'm feeling this again right now. Or, or man, I didn't think about this. This was written about something else, but it completely applies to what I, I'm dealing with right now. Or this... Com Completely is speaking. You know, the song may even, you know, evolve into a different meaning at that moment for me. And, uh, you know, so it's just, it, it, it depends. But, uh, you know, it's, we've, we've come to the conclusion that the, this album, whether it wasn't written like we thought about the days and years prior to that, it, it, it was probably written for this year yeah. uh, and uh, we didn't know it yet you know Scott I'll be perfectly honest with you I was a little bit uneasy to meet Scott I'll be perfectly honest with you I was a little bit uneasy to meet you last time you guys came in town in February when we sat down to rap just because of things I'd read or um, things I'd seen about the band and yourself or videos I'd seen and putting it all together thinking that you guys are a little bit untouchable like you're not really fan involved like you don't want to sit down and meet your fans and shake hands and do pictures and all that stuff which uh, which isn't true. And now that I know you a little bit better, and I've sat with you and I've spoken with you a couple of times, you know, dude, you, you're all about your fans. You love your fans, and uh, you know that uh, they obviously helped you to be where you are. Over 20 million in sales. It's it's an amazing thing. I feel like I I've been the same person since day one. You know, not nothing's ever changed. It's just um, I don't know. You know, I'm I'm learning more and more now about how people perceive people as opposed to how you think you're perceived 
And so I go a lot more out of my way now to to speak to people and, and talk to my crew and, and talk to people because I never knew that, you know, I always thought if I kept my mouth shut and just kept my head down and, you know, stayed in my bus and my dressing room and didn't bother anybody and, and just did my interviews and stuff, then, then uh, no one would, you know, say I walked around like a prima donna or a jerk. But, uh, you know, you can't you can't worry about what other people think because no matter if you're the nicest guy in the world to everyone, someone's going to say something bad about you. If no matter if you try to just hide out and, and, and not give people anything to say, people are going to say something anyway. So you just got to be yourself and, and, uh, live your life for you and the people that you love. And, and, uh, you know, I've realized that a lot this year, but, uh, this is, at least in my opinion, I, this is me, man. Yeah, cool. <laughs> you know, I think where I took that from is in the higher video where um, some fans are backstage. You guys are about to get on stage. You go walking by them. They're reaching out to touch you guys, and you guys act like you don't even see them. You just blaze a trail and walk on by. I mean, was that the intention, or was I missing something? Well, um, to be honest with you, we, we really didn't have much video control until this record, and so we really... Uh, were opposed to that whole scene. I was going to say, I mean, how, how, well, how can you not, though? It's your band. It's your music. It's what you want the public to see about Creed. Well, when you're a, a baby band and you're looking for a record deal, um, some things slip through the cracks. And uh, that was something that, that did. And, and I can't say that, that we had absolutely no control. But, uh, you know, I'll, when we... There are a lot of things that we did not want to happen that that did happen, and and now um, uh, I think our fans could see how dramatically our videos have changed uh, since Sacrifice, um, and that's because we're in, in total control because our record company was cool enough to say, hey, you know what, your videos are a part of your art, and they are a part of an extension of your music, and. And I don't even think we realized that. I think we thought early on it was just something we had to do. And and I think once we realized that, I think our record company did too, and because uh, they're real cool. And uh, and I can, I can, they've definitely changed. And then they're they're definitely now an ex extension of the band, and uh, they all have certain meanings. All right, dude, very cool. Before I let you go, i got one last question for you. Creed in town tonight, St. Paul XL Energy Center, presented by 93X. My question for you, Scott Staff, is this. It's got to be something you think about. I mean, you do have to think about this. In 10 years from now, where is Creed's place in rock? Man, if if we still have a place in rock, I think that would be cool enough. Well, you got to. With 20 million, I mean... People out there buying your records like crazy, dude. They got a lot of people want to see you guys for years to come, and you got a lot in you. You got an amazing voice live. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, man. Um, you know, if we're still kicking around in ten or twenty years, and people are still coming to see us play, you know, I mean, if if we can if we can if we can be there, I think, you know, that's exactly what we'll be doing. Um, and like I was saying earlier, you guys have a big passion for your fans. It's all about your fans. You guys will do anything for them, and that's amazing. Yeah. We just don't think we can ever do or say or give enough to let them know how thankful we are for 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 what they've done in our lives and, and you know, attaching themselves to our music and how diehard they are. And it's just, you know, we're blown away by it, and, and you know, we we feel like, there's not enough thank yous. There's not enough of this. There's not enough hands to shake or, you know, stuff to give away that could really express how we all feel inside about them. But, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I know that we'll definitely do all we can to, to keep them in the loop. You know, we got Creed Inc. now, which is a, a magazine that we created to, to let the, uh, you know, our fans, you know, know everything and it's from the band and and uh it's uh you know we keep trying to think of new and creative ways to 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 give back to the fans and and uh give our at least our fans something that you know they can't learn or know from any other magazine and uh if it's in creed inc it's the truth right. <laughs> and most of the other magazines it's about 30% of what you really said really? is actually what's printed. Yeah, that's, I've heard that a lot.
lot, actually. That uh, a lot of the stuff you read sometimes, like, dude, I didn't say that at all. That's that's about ninety percent of what's happened with me, at least. Oh, really? Yeah. So you and the whole uh, Fred Durst deal, that crap from the past, right? Uh, the media building that up to be more than that was. Uh, that was all uh, just for media hype. Right. You know, Fred and I used the media for that, but uh, you know, it. Uh, it's just funny how the media works. I only do radio and TV interviews now, really? at, at least at this point. So nothing in print because you know it's going to get twisted. Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, that might change, but as of right now, it, it's not going to happen. Right on, brother. I appreciate you uh, spending time sitting down with me, Pablo, from 93X, uh, right before you guys hit the stage, Creed XL Energy Center in St. Paul. Uh, thank you very much, man. I look forward to seeing your show tonight. Thanks, man. We're We're excited. As soon as uh, I get done with the meet and greet here in a few minutes, uh, if you peeked in the door, you would see a completely different person getting in this pregame mode. So, yeah, I got to get all fired up. I start getting the pre-show uh, anxiety and sweat and pacing around like I'm getting ready to go pitch in the World Series or something. So it's, it's uh, you know, that's the build up in the psych. So we are pumped. Very cool. Pablo from 93X, Scott Staff from Creed on the weather tour backstage. St. Paul XL Energy Center, going to rock your ass in minutes. Cool. What's up? This is Scott Staff from Creed. You are hanging with my boy Pablo on 93X.